Multi-modeling. Multi-modeling involves building large models from a heterogeneous population or collection of different model types. Model, Multi-modeling reflects the diversity of materials and their interconnections in the real world. When we create a house, for example, we use a variety of different materials, each appropriate for its specific role in the construction of the house. Concrete for the foundation, PVC pipes, or perhaps copper pipes for carrying water and sewage, wood for forming the frame, and roofing material made from asphalt, ceramic, slate, or wood shingle. It's clear that one material is not versatile enough to be used to build the entire house. Modeling dynamic systems is similar. One may use different model types to create a heterogeneous collection, a multi-model. A finite state machine may capture the semantics of a higher level phase transitions, where whereas an equational model captures the lower level continuous time specification. So both of these can be placed together. Now let's look at two key concerns. Number one is connecting. How do we connect model components together or models themselves? This can be broken into two questions. How do we connect components in the same model together and how do we connect one model to another model? Encapsulation, how do we create hierarchies of models with one model component being defined at a lower level from another model, either of the same type or of a different one? Connecting. Things must fit together if we're to connect one thing to another, like toys such as Lego blocks, Lincoln Logs, and other constructor kits. Here's a locomotive coupler described on the site sdrm.org. For multi-models, we need to ensure that data types match on each side of the coupling or interface. When you plug your toaster into the wall, the male and female sides must match or your toaster won't work. So while we may achieve diversity in toasters, walls and equivalently in model presentations and representations, there needs to be a standard lurking underneath the presentation layer which gives us compatibility in a functional interface. It also goes without saying that there must be a mechanical interface for both toaster plugs and model components. That is, if there are three prongs on the plug, there have to be three holes in the wall. This is exactly the same for dynamic models. The number of traces, connectors, and ports ideally must match. If they do not match, as when it is sometimes possible to bypass the ground connector on an electrical plug, then the behavior must be well defined. Now, a mathematical basis behind connecting is functional composition, using one or more functions as arguments to another. For example, we can take a, two functions, f1 and f2, and compose them by saying f1, left parentheses, f2, left parentheses, x, and then two right parentheses which is saying that F2 operates upon X and then F1 operates on F2. Now you can imagine Lego blocks labeled F1, F2, and X. Encapsulation. We need to be able to put one thing inside of or underneath of another, as in these Russian Matryoshka dolls. And we can go ahead and just see how these Matryoshka dolls work is that this is the outermost one that you see and when you get this set you see this but this is contained within this one and likewise this is contained within this one, this and this one, this and this one, 
on down the line. And these doll sets can contain anywhere from 5 to 10 to 12 dolls, one inside of the other, in a nested fashion. Mathematically, we use the term recursion to define this type of relation between one object's object and a set of objects defined within this object. Stepping back a little and using mathematics as our low-level guide, we have basic things such as sets, variables, numbers, relations, and functions. And it's quite amazing what constructs are possible given these primitives. Simple variables cannot contain other variables unless we venture into the idea of set. Sets provide encapsulation because they can be operationally defined in terms of recursion. Likewise, functions can be defined in terms of themselves. Looking back at Lego blocks, there are some sorts of Legos that are larger than the standard set. Thus, one large Lego type block may contain many small ones. This gets Legos into the recursive into recursive territory. Let's take a look at an example model, multi-model. And this multi-model is going to be a description of a dynamic process, the process of a technician mixing two flasks of boiling liquid. And so the top level model is a Petri net. This Petri net has three transitions, number one, number two, and number three. The first transition essentially represents the idea and dynamics of flask number one with its boiling liquid. When the liquid is boiled, a token is sent from P1 into P3. So that's the constraint that we're modeling using the Petri net on T1. So this is T1 represents the that liquid in flask number one has, is boiled. Likewise, liquid in flask number two is boiled is represented by T2. When we have boiling liquid in flask two and boiling li liquid in flask one, we'll have tokens in P3 and P4 respectively in this Petri net, and then T3 can fire. So T3 represents the dynamics of the technician actually mixing the two flasks of boiling liquid. Now this is a multi-model because we have more than one model type at more than one level. So if we take our microscope and zoom into T1, we get something that looks like this. Our microscope reveals a three-level finite state machine. And at the topmost level, we have the behavior of the water being in one of two phases, cold or not cold. And depending on the temperature of the water, or depending on the input to the heater being on or off, we move from the cold state to the not cold state and back and forth. For instance, we move from the cold state only to the not cold state when the input is equal to on. So when we turn on the burner or the heating element, then we move along this line from cold to not cold. When temperature equals the ambient temperature, we move into the cold state. So the cold state represents a kind of an ambient room temperature, and not cold state represents every other temperature above that. So the not cold state is really where the fun stuff happens. And if we take a look at the not cold state, if we take our microscope and we focus on not cold and zoom into it, we see that we have a finite state machine with four states, heating, cooling, boiling, 
and an exception condition, which represents underflow or overflow of the liquid. So what's interesting so far with this multi-model is that we start out with a Petri net. We zoom into transition T1, and we get a hierarchical model, and yet this is a homogeneous hierarchy. So we've got two concepts here. We've got the idea of homogeneity and heterogeneity, heterogeneity on one hand, and on the other hand we have the idea of hierarchy on the other. For this represents a hierarchy, but it's homogeneous because all three levels are finite state machines. And we can dive in again to the heating. We take our microscope and focus in on this heating state, the state right here, and this is what heating state looks like when we zoom in. We have a functional block model, which could also be represented as a differential equation. This represents Newton's law of cooling and heating. And it is a differential equation with respect to a variable called T, which is temperature. And temperature is changed over time. And as the temperature changes, there are external transitions which can cause a change in state. For instance, we're in the heating state right here. However, if the temperature reaches 100 degrees Celsius, then we move to the boiling state. If the input is turned off, we move to the cooling state. As long as the input remains on, meaning that we've got our flame or our heating element on, then we stay within a heating state. So just to summarize, we have a multi-model that has a top layer of a Petri net, a second layer which is actually a hierarchy of three layers itself, all finite state machines, and then a last layer underneath a couple of states that we have in here, notably heating and cooling, where we use a differential equation for Newton's law of heating and cooling. So there are several benefits to multi-modeling. It can be used for a variety of purposes. It can help us with problems of scale. As things get bigger, we can divide systems into many different levels. So this helps us to manage complexity. It helps us with the problem of homogeneity or sameness by allowing us to use different types of models in an aggregate model the multi-model, we refer to this as heterogeneity. It provides a philosophical basis for diversity in the presentation of model structures. That is, how they are presented to the human, how they sound, how they look. Since it is not only that a multi-model can be different model types, but but that these different model types may be presented and represented in multiple ways. This allows for personalized, customized, and culturally specific types, which may aid in learning and communicating model structures, as well as being highly motivational.